Hey guys, it's Rod from Civil Advantage Firearms Training here. I thought I would do the intro to this video outside because it's such a great day today. Uh, nice spring day in, uh, in British Columbia. But uh, today we're going to be talking to a guy named John Evers from Ontario and he's a firearms enthusiast, very active member our, of our, uh, our gun culture, our firearm community uh, here in Canada. And I uh, just wanted to uh, let you know that I had everything set up to do a, a video very similar to episode one where I'm in my office and, and there's you know there's some visuals and some interesting stuff to see but you know what after I got on the phone with John I realized I didn't even turn the camera on so <laughs> I lost all the video <laughs> lost that opportunity so now would be a great time to go get your guns make sure they're unloaded and get your cleaning supplies out and clean guns um, uh, because there's not going to be a lot to watch on this video, but I'll tell you this, I really enjoyed our conversation and I had some expectations for what it would be like, uh, but they were all exceeded. So I, I'm hoping that you'll be uh, as interested by our conversation as I, I was. So uh, without further ado, um, here's the call with John Evers. Okay, so on the phone we have uh, John Evers. He's the president of the East Elgin Sportsman Association uh, in Elmer, Ontario. And we're just going to chat a little bit about some of the experiences um, that he's had and, and uh, what he loves about shooting sports and stuff. So you can hear me okay, John? Yes, I can, sir. All right, fantastic. Um, so what, what kind of shooting sports are you involved in right now, just to kind of get a background on you? Well, my mainstay is really Tree Gun and Ipsic, mm -hmm. um, and a smattering of IDPA on the side. But I do enjoy all the aspects of shooting sports. I, I've, I've trap shot on occasion, a bit of small bore here and there, I hunt. Uh, so I'm kind of, I try and consider myself an all-around shooter with, um, you know, emphasis on certain aspects, mainly Ipsic and 3-Gun. I do a lot of 3-Gun in the States. Mm. Well, that's something I haven't attempted yet was to take my guns to the U.S. <laughs> you got to hit some of the bigger matches. It's great. Oh, yeah. And, There's some great ones on the West Coast. I'm dying to try and get out to the west side of the States. It's some big ones out that way. Uh, Mystery Mountain and uh, some Colorado matches. There's great stuff out there. Uh, cool. Cool. And do you find it easy to get your guns across the border or...? If you pick the right border crossing, yeah, we've got it pretty mapped out. You head in at one border crossing, come back in another one, because the Americans are good at some and bad at others, and Canadians are good at some and bad at others. So we've pretty much got it knocked down where to go in and where to come back. I know exactly what you're saying there, because I have my favorite border crossings to cross where everybody seems to be really reasonable, and then I've had bad experiences at, 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 at other ones because I do quite a bit of traveling myself. So uh, thankfully not with firearms. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> an added a different uh, environment down there. You have full capacity magazines. Uh, the rules are um, and the safety is a little less stringent than we're used to in Ontario, but still a great group of guys down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I know exactly what you mean. I shoot with a lot of my clients. It's uh it's been a really good thing for you know an activity that's kind of out of the ordinary. People remember it really well. But yeah, it's uh well you know they don't have the Canadian Firearm Safety Course down there. Oh, that's just it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and they have full capacity magazines for now. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got to travel through New York to get to my next match. We're still on checkout Canadian travel through, so we're worrying about that one. Yeah, no kidding. Well, right on. So recently you were a, the subject of a piece on uh, gun culture on CBC's The National, and uh, that was uh, all over the forums and whatnot. And uh, I, you know, I, I sent these questions, so hopefully you've had a chance to prepare, but what uh, what do you feel like um, you were trying to accomplish with uh, with exposing yourself to CBC? Well, I think actually Nick or the producer took a, a good choice in the somewhat in their title. Uh, I hadn't anticipated that, which was out of the shadows. And it's my contention has been for some time now that gun owners, as a group, we've been our worst enemy. We blame the media for all the attacks against us, yet we've never reached out to the media. So if we're being all insular and frankly, neurotic about exposing our culture and being proud of it in front of the public, in front of the media, for always hiding it, what do you expect? If we're not reaching to the media, they're going to see that and that we're being shy and we're trying to hide something. And we've hidden as a culture for, I think, 40 years at least. So I was trying to breach that gap um, and, and reach out to the media and say, hey, you know, let's take a look at us. And they did prompt it themselves. They mentioned it was, they came from CBC trying to look at us and looking for someone who would at least talk to them. Most media guys I talk to, when they try and find someone to comment on a story, they get just blackwalled. It's like, nope, no, no comment, no comment, don't want to talk, don't want to talk. And that doesn't work. And that's, I think, partially why we are where we are today. So let's try to you know, fight against that, that scenario. 
You know, I totally agree with you. And I had a, I had a, a chat with a, a friend of mine. Uh, we used to work together and he had since moved um, way out east in, in Canada. And I told him about the idea of this, you know, this little uh, video series for the YouTube channel. And he wasn't sure about it. He was like, well, you know, but I, I don't think I want people to know what rights we do have because they might attack those directly. And um, I think that, uh, as, I, you know, as we said earlier, um, I think that the only way that we're going to take this almost 2 million people, and there's 2 million PAL holders just under uh, in Canada, and really get them proud of what we do and to share that culture and, and to also stand up if we, uh, should we need them, if, if you know, something like the registry or something like that would, would happen again, then we, you know, uh, to, to coin the CBC phrase, then we'd have to come out of the shadows. And I think if uh, I agree with you completely that it's, it's probably more important that we show exactly who gun owners are and instead of worrying so much and, and hiding in the corner and, you know, uh, you know, too, uh, too afraid to, to, you know, show uh, everybody what our passions are because we don't want to be attacked again. It's, uh, it is a problem. Even as simple as, you know, uh, I'm an Ipsic shooter, and you go to some of the Ipsic matches, and you get the match shirt. And here I am purchasing a match shirt from a shooting event, from not only that, but a handgun shooting event. And you look at the shirt, most of them, there's no indication what the event was about. You know, it's this national, the provincial. There's, where's, where's the picture of the handgun? Where's the target? It could be, you know, a ping pong tournament, as far as I'm concerned, looking at that shirt. And, well, we don't want to have guns on it. Well, well why not? Why would you not want to proudly put a gun or indication with a shooting event on your shirt to, to advertise your event? And, oh, they, they turn away and, oh, we can't have that. And I just don't get that mentality. You know, it, like you said, we've, we've got to be proud. We've got to, you know, reach out. Uh, I'm, I'm 100% on board with what you're saying. Yeah, um, it, and, but Ipsics like that. They're very, very careful about the image of their sport, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I've heard that. I haven't done any Ipsic shooting. I, I don't have time. I'd love to. I just might, you know, my life is uh, uh, so ridiculously uh, busy. But uh, maybe someday I'd like to do it. But yeah, I've, I've heard that. Um, so, I mean, are you happy with uh, with how CBC represented us and, and how it went generally? If you consider the source, then yes. I think it was a, a, a leap um, for CBC in the correct direction. Am I happy with everything? No. Um, I have sent an email to them expressing some of my, you know, A, my accolades, for sure, and then with some reflection, some things I think, you know, here, here's where you went wrong, and a couple of points that I, were, were, frankly, were false. So I want to draw that to their, to their attention and say, hey, you know, I never actually said that. The one part he mentioned, that, you know, John says you're either with him or against him. No, never said that. Check your tape, guys. I never said that. And I don't believe that to be true. I think that there are extremists on both ends. I'm definitely a pro-firearms extremist on one end, and there are the antis, and there are one on the end, and the average Canadian between really doesn't give a crap. They don't know guns. They don't know about them. They'll follow sheep like anything. So when the politicians lie and misrepresent the truth and the facts, they're like, oh, well, that seems reasonable, and I'll believe that. And if we now prove them incorrect and show the truth, oh, they'll see the logic in that. But they really don't care. They have more important things like paying their bills. They're not really active and knowledgeable about the, about the facts and, and the whole situation. So I'm not saying, I've never said, hear it with me or against me. Don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And the next part was um, the junior program. They made a point that we are growing. And East Elgin, I'm proud to say as their president, um, we've grown from, when I was first president back in 2001, we had 208 members. Now we're at 714. And they accredited that to, quote, going after the kids. And again, that's false. Our, our junior program, the kids, their parents, are not actually members. 80% of our junior program's parents are not members. They're just general public who want their kids to expose to firearms in a safe environment, and they've chosen these dogs to achieve that. So we haven't gone after the kids. We don't advertise our program. We have you know, 85 kids on a Friday night without advertising. We advertise. We've just inundated even more. So we're not going after them. We're providing a service which is being appreciated. So again, they were trying to twist that into a negative connotation, I think, to, that we are you know, twisting these kids and trying to brainwash them, frankly, into our culture. But again, if you look at any other group, um, soccer or, or you know, race cars, they bring up race car kids up in go-karts at a very young age and bring them up into NASCAR racing. Is that somehow bad? No. 
that's accepted in our culture in our society and so should shooting mm -hmm. absolutely and and i just uh, i just watched it in fact i i had my my wife watch um the interview uh just now she hadn't seen it and i had mentioned i was going to talk to you on the phone and so um we just watch it again and that is exactly how it's worded and to to think for <laughs> to think for one second that they're not cognizant of how they word things or the, that they don't understand the you know the uh uh the power of how you word things and how you phrase things you know you, you're totally naive if you think that they they're not on it a hundred percent oh they know they wrote scripts oh exactly right and yeah. and that's exactly what they say they go they're going after the kids like like uh it, it's a tobacco company or something exactly. yeah. <laughs> with joe camel right <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I think all in all, I mean, I, I was, you know, I, I wasn't there to, to see all the footage, right? And, and you were, but um, I think all in all, they did a pretty fair job. I, you know, they threw their little digs in here and there, but it was by no means, you know, a hatchet piece or anything. Yeah, particularly in terms of CBC. You mm -hmm. know, if you look at the source, as I said, then coming forth, and I, I also, I, I, I laugh when he says he wasn't converted. You look at the smile on his face when he shot the three fifty seven. When you talk to the producer afterwards, saying he's walking around the, the department showing off his targets. And I must mention, uh, one scene they show a absolute dead nuts X-ring shot on a target. As a, that was his very first shot with a handgun ever. That's the Ruger Mark II. He never touched a gun before in his life. And his very first shot was a bullseye X. The guy actually had some skill. Well, maybe I said he's one of my top people I've ever shot, taught to teach in, in, in terms of shooting. Absolutely, he'd be top ten easily. He's a natural. It's a terrible waste of skill set that he's never going to you know, be able to you know experience and to build upon. But he's really a good shot. Huh? Well, maybe there's a, maybe there's something about him we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, well, let's uh, let's move over to talk about the uh, the most recent thing. I was on the uh, forum. Uh, I think uh, two days ago, and uh, I saw the uplate uploaded your your first real legitimate handwritten hate mail letter. I am so touched by that, I must say. Um, as Tony Bernardo from SELA said, you know, you hit the big time when. And yes, I received an actual handwritten, in, in longhand, uh, very nice penmanship, I must mention, uh, hate mail. Yeah. And uh, obviously this person does not know who I am, what kind of an individual I am, and what my character is like. If you thought this would at all dissuade me from my cause. If anything, it would embolden me. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, out of Toronto, which was, you know, almost, almost logical, or, uh, you know, you'd think that, no shock, it's from, from Toronto. And, and the, the vileness of this letter is striking. And it just really, and it reinforces my point, that the, the people who don't get us really do hate us. And I said that in the piece that was quoted there. They want us gone. They want our culture, frankly, exterminated. And you see that. Uh, we saw the whole sharing car stairs back in the 80s about the, the first step. Um, the C60 was the first step in the social engineering of Canada. They want to engineer us, our culture, out of existence. This person would love that. I, on the other hand, in the reverse. If people don't want to shoot, I'm like, fine, don't shoot. I don't care. If you want to play golf or some other, you know, more inane sport, go ahead and do that. that if you enjoy, if that brings you pleasure in your life, go ahead and do that. I don't want them to all have to shoot or, or not shoot. But meanwhile, they want to rule our lives, and they will dictate what we do, what we don't do. Entirely abominable mindset from my perspective. No, it's, in, it's incredible. And, I mean, I, I wrote... Uh, I wrote... <laughs> Okay, I gotta admit, I wrote the letter. No, I read. The <laughs> I just had nothing else to talk about, John. So I had to write that letter. But um, no, I mean, I read the letter, and it, and it was, yeah, it was just, it was vicious and in every aspect. And you know, can you imagine? I mean, if 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 you were to contact the uh, the RC, well, the OPP in your case, and say, hey, you know, I got this really vicious letter. I don't know what's going on. You know, maybe you guys can look into it. I mean, they'd laugh at you. But if you wrote a letter. With you know, as a as a gun owner to to a, an anti gun person like that, I oh, mean, oh, they'd be visiting me big time. Oh, yeah, you'd have a firearm prohibition. They would come yep. and get your guns. Absolutely. And and one thing yeah. I noted in her letter, you could see her her script 
changed as she wrote it. She got angrier and angrier. And you just I could just imagine her at her desk frothing at the mouth that she's gonna get this guy and gonna get this guy. So my record touched just the effort. The effort she took in, in writing it and chased down the, the, the address for the gun club where she mailed it to. Um, it's actually quite quite a heartwarming story that you know that I affected someone that much. <laughs> and uh, someone who could write that letter, if I negatively affected her, I'll be proud of that. And this kind of a mentality is mad at me. That's a badge of honor in my world. Yeah, I guess there's no uh, no bad publicity. I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, and, and it's the, the personal attacks. She questions my, my masculinity. I think, really? <laughs> really? Come on. You don't know me from anything. And you attack me, not my ideas. But attack my, my person. Yeah, ad hominem and attacks. And that shows yeah. a person of low intellect and, and low caliber as a human being. Really, it does. It says much more about her than me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's it's very interesting. And and you know when you when you attack someone's masculinity like that, you know it's it's very interesting. And I I often think about this. And I don't go again. I don't go too down, far down the rabbit hole. But it's amazing to me. And, and let me throw this dis- disclaimer out. Um, anybody that watches my videos and stuff knows, you know, I don't represent myself to be anything I'm not. I'm not uh, a, a soldier. I'm not military. I don't run around and pretend I'm, you know, one of the Magpul guys. I don't, I don't do that, right? There's no macho-ness on my channel. Um, but I cannot, at the same time, it's really interesting to me how fashionable it's becoming to be weak. You know, and I don't know where it, that comes from, but you know, if you're not if you're not weak, and you don't give up any, and you don't give up all your strength in any way, shape, or form, you know, and and I mean, you know, resisting things, uh, political change, you know, dealing with guns, um, any anything, uh, you know, all of a sudden, just people are, you know, you're too aggressive, and and this and that, and I just, uh, it's kind of it's a very strange thing. I, I don't think that we have anything to be ashamed of by being strong and, and by being independent. That's, and be principled, right? Yeah, absolutely. You have principles and stand by them. Um, that's one of my favorite stories I had a couple weeks back where I remember my gun club came up to me and he was, he was quite irate. And he said, you know what I hate about you, John? And I'm thinking, well, dude, there's probably lots of things about me you can hate. I mean, just pick one. He goes, well, you always think you're right. I'm like, well, yeah, of, of course I do. Did you go through your life thinking you're, you're wrong? A weird philosophy that is to go through life thinking you're wrong. You will know. I said, well, I, I think I'm right, and I will defend that position of rightness until, frankly, I'm proven wrong, and then I'll quickly change my position to the new correct answer, and I'm back to be right again, defending that new correct right position. So these people who, who are wishy-washy and don't stand for anything, uh, I, I, I just can't grasp that. My mind just swims, on, you know. And, and like you said weakness, and why would you want to be weak? You know, strength is not a bad thing. Personal integrity is not a bad thing, Rod. Mm-hmm. Um, Bothers me. Well, I, I'm with you, and and here's a, here's an interesting question. I kicked this question around in my head a little bit before. I wasn't sure whether I was even going to ask it because, again, you know how I like to kind of <laughs> like to keep this show on the ground a little bit. But um, I I I've done a lot of research, um, well, an incredible amount of research about about gun control and firearm issues in Canada, and and because I spend so much time in the United States or talking to Americans all day, that's what I do for my business. You know, I'm I'm really in tune with the firearm, you know, the political situation down there. And uh, one of the one of the big subjects, one of the one of the most compelling subjects when or topics when it comes to gun control is multiple victim public shootings. And I've I've processed this whole issue in my head, you know, to such a such a degree. I'm sure you're exactly the same. Every time I'm driving and it's quiet, I'm thinking about things and and I'm processing and processing. And I look at the people that exploit victims of these kinds of tragedies. I mean, they're on it. The very next day, they're on it and they're they're leveraging these people to to further their agenda. And you know, they they always paint themselves as the good ones, but you know, one thing that always pops up in my mind, if I were to speak to a victim of a crime and they are looking at me like, you know, you're the evil gun guy that supported, you know, the person that attacked me, I would say this, and it goes, and it comes back to principles. I would say, and I can speak for myself, and but I, I would think that there's a very high percentage of the of firearm owners 
that in a situation where there's a multiple victim public shooting, they would run towards the sound of the gunfire instead of running away from it. Um, and I don't know, I might be painting with a pretty broad brush, but I would, you know, I think of what I would do, although I have a lot more training than, than most people and, and as do you, but you know, I think there's a, almost a different, uh, different kind of people that are firearm owners. I would say there's a, a larger percentage that have that mindset, uh, than the average Canadian or average any, any citizen you want, that there, it does attract a certain mentality. And I put it also, that's also a problem we have. And it's our independence. We are independent thinkers, right? And you look at the, the and I'll use the term sheep because it, does, it is appropriate. There are far more sheep out there, and sheep won't run to or fro. They'll just, you know, freeze. Gun owners tend to be more A-type personalities on average, you want to stereotype them, more independent thinkers, and independent people don't wait for the fire department to show up, put the fire out. They don't wait for the police officer to show up. They will act themselves to take care of what needs taken care of. That's also a detriment because that makes us harder to organize. It's a whole herding cats atmosphere, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, I can understand philosophically where we're coming from, but we also need to harness that and take that energy that the, the fire is raging right now. We need to put it out because we're on fire. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's been it's been a, a, a fantastic few years for for gun owners in Canada, and I, I you know I'll be totally honest with you. I when the when the conservatives and I'm not you know a con, you know a big conservative fan myself. It's not a a political statement. I'm just uh, referring to you know the power the party that's in power. But when they 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 um, campaigned on a platform um, that had a restoration of rights feel to it both, you know, for Bill C-26, the Citizen Self-Defense and Citizen Arrest Act and the collapsing of the gun registry and and um, tougher sentences for hardcore criminals and this and that. And they, you know, it, it, would, it, it boggles the mind, you know, so many years of, of liberal rule and we've seen everything go the, the opposite way, you know, uh, a lot more, um, you know, easy treatment of criminals and law-abiding citizens that step outside the line, you know, the, the system comes down and, or even if they defend themselves and crushes them. But I never honestly thought that, especially when they had a minority government, right, a few years back, that they would actually really, truly get rid of the gun registry. And they actually did it. I just, it's incredible. It's to have a politician actually do what he said he was going to do is a shocker for Canadians. Oh, I, it's <laughs> so, exactly, uh, yeah. I mean, on the other hand, I've been working for the Conservative Party since I was, um, various iterations, since I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to see them actually, I've always you know, thought that they should do what they say. And I think that's where, you know, you get, I talked to some NDP supporters and, and liberal supporters, and they're like, well, we really don't mean that. So, but that's your leader party said X, Y, or Z. Oh, but they won't actually do that. So doesn't that tell you something? When the people you're, you're voting for, you're expecting them to not do what they said they would do? Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy with the, you know, concerned what they've done so far. I'm not so happy with the Firearms Advisory Committee uh, changes recently. Mm -hmm. But again, they're playing politics at a, at a higher ethereal level than I'm used to, perhaps. And I have to trust that it'll come out in the end. Yeah, and the and the internet spying stuff and the, and the big uh, G20 parties. And, you know, we're not really... You know, a country that should be thrown around that kind of cash, but no. you know, you're you're never going to get you know everything that you want. But I cannot remember being as you know in in you know at least since I was 18 or 19 or any any age where I was aware of you know my place in as a citizen. I never remember getting more rights at the end of someone's term than I did in the beginning. As far as I you know since I've been born. That's quite an interesting point. I think you're correct. Yeah, it's always been I, a road. I've never looked at it that way, but I think you're absolutely correct. And and not just like, oh, I got a little something. I mean, we we got, there's some pretty significant stuff going on, right? I mean, now there's there's some not to get over onto the Citizen Self Defense Act, right, which just came into force. Um, you know, we're going to have a long time before we develop, a, a, you know, some case precedent for that for it to really be effective. But I just I. I just couldn't believe it. Everywhere else around the world, people are getting their rights eroded, and we had been following suit for, you know, as long as I've been alive, and I just couldn't believe it. They actually, you know, came through with those promises. So, anyway, very, very interesting thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think it's going the right way. We just got to keep working. That's just it. That's, I, yeah, I agree with you. 
All right. Well, anything else you want to uh, chat about before we wrap it up? No, I'm good. Awesome. Well, it's, I think what I want to say, though, is, um, and I've been trying this at East Dog, and frankly, and I, I do appreciate, frankly, you know, this, this chance to talk to you about this, to chat, but there's so few of us, Rod. Um, look at East Elgin, and, you know, when the radio station wants to talk to some of the guns in the London area, they'll call me. And I now get calls from Toronto radio stations in Kitchener, and I'm their, quote, go-to guy, other than Tony from C- CSSA, he's, you know, but he's so busy. What we need is more feet on the street. Mm-hmm. We need more people that are stepping forward to the media. But we need the people, frankly, the right people. We need people who are calm, and I'm getting much calmer. I used to be far more agitated in my interviews than I am. I'm learning maybe growing old. But we need more people and young people stepping forth and getting out. Uh, I've been working hard at East Elgin in terms of local you know, cable shows. There's one I go to every about six months and do a little you know, song and dance about this gun or whatever that's going on. But I'm now bringing more people from East Elgin out to those events to put that face was so no longer the John Evers show. It's now, oh, here's a female member of East Elgin to talk about their experience at East Elgin. But we need more of that. We need, I'd love to see some 20 year olds doing interviews on CBC, talking about their love of the sport. Show that youth, they're not just much, you know, frankly, middle aged, balding men out there. We need more females out there speaking articulately about our sport and their passion and putting that forth to counter the Wendy's out there who are very articulate, who know their points, and have great talking points to fight us, and have a great public image. We need to reverse that and have a similar body of people who can come forth and really need to work at that. Um, you know, there's, it's, our culture is spreading and we just got to keep up the pressure and we just got to have that, that even keeled approach and that reasonable approach um, rather than like, for me, I'm definitely not an extremist. I have my views and I think, you know, I, I do believe I'm right and, or I wouldn't be talking to anybody about it, but I don't really, I don't, uh, I definitely don't draw any lines in the sand and I don't, um, aggressively try to, um, convert anybody. Um, but I, I tell them the experience that I've had in firearms and, and how much I love it and, and how it's become such a ridiculously large part of my life, you know, unlike a, anything I've ever seen. I never saw a gun in my life before I was uh, 33. So, you know, just uh, whatever. No, I'm about 35, actually. So it's, uh, you know, and I'm just sharing the passion rather than arguing a political point. Do you know? That's what Nick had asked me in the interview with CBC. He said, you really trying to convert me. I said, well, convert, I'm trying to educate you. And if education leads to conversion because you know more, well, that's a good thing, really. If you know more about any subject in life, how can that be a bad thing? Experience new experiences and, you know, just new worlds you can enter. How can it be a bad thing to anybody? How can you look down on that? And that's like, the best way. The people who, are, who hate guns fear them, and they fear them because they lack information. And, if, you know, Open House, East Elgin, I'm not sure if you heard about our, our program there, our Open House. Last year, we had 1,660 people through our doors in two days. Mm-hmm. We did the same thing. A little thing. hick gun club outside of Elmer, Ontario, which is a population of 5,000. We had people driving five and six hours, lining up for three hours for a chance to shoot a handgun. That's awesome. That's a great thing about East Elgin, but a sad thing that, why is that opportunity to shoot a handgun not closer? Why are they driving five hours to achieve that end? Where's the other local gun clubs that are opening their doors? Now they're starting to. I'm getting questions, you know, how do you organize this? I'm trying to help more clubs do this, but because we didn't do it for so long and we were the only place, that's why we're in the pickle we are now. Mm-hmm. Back to that, you know, that insular world. Well, yeah, and and, and hiding from the uh, hiding from the assault, you know, trying to, you know, stay um, stay out of the out of the light in case we lose something something else. But yeah, there's no. Uh, it's uh, it's time that we do the crazy Ivan, I guess, right? Exactly. Turn around and go straight at them. Yep. And we, I've always been very forthcoming of that. Yeah. Well, no, I, I think you're, I think you're totally right. Um, we do. We did the same thing. Well, we do. The, I'm on the um, board of directors for Abbotsford Fishing Game Club, and uh, recently we uh, just had our annual general meeting, and we uh, passed a resolution to cap off our club, uh, cap the membership at uh, at a thousand members because we've gone from. I think 200 and, 200 and some odd members, but in the last five years, we've gone up to 850. So, 
it's uh, it's just booming, and we do the very same thing every every year. We have an open house. I was uh, I was there with a bunch of firearms uh, myself this year, volunteering, and it was you know it was a it was a war zone. We expended tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition, and kids are getting to shoot ARs and and Tavors, and I say it wrong, Tavor, but and handguns, and everybody was just having the time of their lives. We had to kick people off the property at the end. Oh, yeah. So, I always have people, you know, it's like, wow, time to go home. Why? Because we're tired. <laughs> yeah, my, all day here. And my gun is, I'm going to have to replace the barrel because it's almost melted. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's, uh, no, I think we're on the right track. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hopefully, uh, I thought this went really well. Hopefully, uh, you've got some time, maybe in a, in a month or two, we can have another chat. Sounds good to me. Anytime you want. Awesome, John. Thanks for the call. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Bye.